Hey guys, Kevin here. Over the last few days, I've been messing around with the Moto G5. This is a phone my, my friend purchased, and he was kind enough to loan it to me for a few days before he started using it. So I've done a few videos with it, and I'd like to tie up all my thoughts about it in this review. Now, I'll delve deeper into the phone itself in a, in a few seconds, but I just want to quickly explain what this is. This is an Android phone. It is... It depends what your perspective, but it's kind of like a budget phone or a, a low mid-range phone. Probably the best affordable Android phone or one of the best that you can buy. Uh, in the UK, my friend purchased it for around £160. Retails around the $200, €200 Euro mark and it came out in March 2017. So it's been out for about three or four months now. It's had pretty good reviews. So what I'd like to do now is take you to my desk and just show you a little close-up of how this works and what you can expect if you buy this phone. So guys, here we have the Moto G. It has a 5-inch screen, 1080p screen. This is the box that it came in. Now, I did the unboxing the other day if you want to have a closer look at what you get with it. But this sums up the main features of the phone. It's got a 5-inch Full HD 1080p screen, 1.4 GHz octa-core processor, 30 megapixel 1080p video recording camera at the back, 5 megapixel front camera, which can also record at 1080p, and it has a 2800 milliamp battery. So, as you can see, it switched off just now, but I wanted to show you guys what it was like when you actually turn the phone on. I think that's important as well, just to show you the the what you can expect when you actually use the phone. Before I do that, just quickly run down what you can expect on the phone. This isn't a fingerprint sensor, it's just the Motorola logo. You've got the, the back camera and the flash, you've got a mic there. You've got the fingerprint sensor there, and you've got the camera, flash, and the earpiece there. This is also the loudspeaker. At the bottom, you've got a USB micro B connection port, nothing on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you've got power, and then the volume rocker, and at the top, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. As you can see here, I have the sexy gold version. So I'll turn it on. There we go. Now, I will bore you with some stats when that's loading up. Now, the chipset is Qualcomm Snapdragon 430, CPU octa-core 1.4 gigahertz and GPU 505. This has internal storage. This is a 16 gigabyte version. And apparently it can take up to 256 gigabytes or um, micro SD card. Now, one of the main rivals to this is from another phone from Motorola, the G5 Plus. In some respects, I think the G5 Plus should be called something else like the G6 or something because it is quite a different phone, actually. It's not just a few different features. It's got a 5.2 inch screen, still 1080p. It's got a 12 megapixel camera that can do 4K recording. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, slightly higher battery at 3000 milliamps, but uh, it also has a Snapdragon 625. So it's a, it's a more powerful phone across the board, but it is more expensive as well. When this retails at the $200 euro mark, this retails at 280, but you know, obviously prices go up and down and you can get bargains if you shop around. So, I have covered some of the things over the last few days um, as far as, you know, features, etc. So I'll be going over some of the same things. One thing I did notice is the fingerprint reader, and that's what you can expect. Now, coming from, you know, phones like the HTC U11 and the, um, I think it there, the OnePlus 5, they have the, the buttons for going back, etc., down at the bottom, and the, the fingerprint button doubles as a home button. But that's not the case with this phone. The home buttons and, you know, the back button, etc., it's all on the screen itself. I have found myself, because I'm used to using those phones, I have found myself using this to go home, and it doesn't work, but that's just because I've been using that phone. So I apologize if I do that through this video. It's a fairly light phone, and, whoops, um, 
I think it looks good. I've got a cheesy black case for it as well. Oh, my friend does. The fingerprint sensor seems okay. Uh, I'll quickly show you. You can see I've searched for it before. Copyright free music. So, speakers are okay. Not astounding, but what speakers are on a smartphone. Um, you know, it, it doesn't seem any worse or better than any other smartphone I've tested recently. The speaker is here. Um, I quickly tried my nano sim in this phone. I made a call. Seemed okay, but I haven't used it extensively. Additionally, for battery life, I haven't been using this every day. Um, I haven't been, you know, using it for WhatsApp or messages or calls. So I can't really talk about battery life. That's something I really can't talk about. And anything I, I do say about it would be speculation. From what I've read and from the specifications alone with a 1080p screen and a 2800 milliamp battery, you should get a day of usage, no problem. And from the limited time that I've been messing around with it, I haven't seen battery life degrade in any way that suggests that you won't get a day or more so of usage. It's really hard to kind of tell with these things because it does depend on the way that you use um, the phone. But there's lots of video tests there, out there and reviews that focus on battery life more than I will. Now, as far as performance goes, I mean, obviously, this is going to be slower than a flagship like the HTC U11, which I use every day. Now, I'll just do a very quick test, unscientific, but I'll try and load up Kingdom Rush. I'll do it like this. Moto G at the bottom here. Um, okay. Yeah, I didn't do it at the same time. So that's basically what you will find in general for all applications. On a flagship phone, you will all the apps will load up quicker. So it's again the same with Asphalt 8. I'll do the same test. I find it really hard to press them at the exact same time. This one will load quicker. It's got a fa much faster processor. It's got a little bit more RAM. There we go. You can see I've not actually... Um, I'll make myself 21. But, although it is slower loading, when an app is actually loaded, um, you're not going to have any problems. It's not like you're loading it up and the game is slower. That's not how it works. It's just a little bit slower at loading up. There might be a slight performance drag in certain games that are a little bit more intensive, but I don't think this is the kind of phone that you would buy if you always wanted the fastest and most, you know, the best phone out there for playing games. Um, I'll see if I can quickly just play a game to give you an idea of what it can do. Now, this isn't a game I actually play a lot myself. It's just... Uh, a game that I thought would be worth installing across my devices because it's it does it is quite a graphical uh, graphically intensive game and I think it illustrates you know the type of game that a lot of maybe younger kids would would play um, or even just driving fans it is a it is a good game I, I had it years ago well Asphalt Seven for my iPad you can see it's handling it no problem. So obviously because they're physical buttons there, you need to raise it up and go back to the home page. So yeah, I mean, I don't think that general performance is something that um, you're going to have a problem with. If we go to Google, I've just typed into Google, Google. Um, 
Let's see, GSM Arena, that was the website I was using for stats earlier. You know, this is the kind of performance you would see if you were browsing the web. There's a lot of factors at play here, you know, your Wi-Fi connection and things like that as well. As I said, um, this one comes with 16 gigabytes. You know, it's got about 10 left. You can put in a micro SD card though. And memory, it's got three gigabytes. 2.8 gigabytes is us usable. And it's got one gigabytes free. Now it is worth pointing out that, you know, that's what I've got free in this one. I've got one gigabytes, uh, one gigabyte of memory free in this one too. On average, 1.1. This one's 0 0.99. So, you know, it's, although this has got one extra gigabyte of RAM, you know, when you install a few apps here, I, I think it'll be fine. I don't think you're going to have any problem, uh, you know, running multiple apps on this. I've found that, you know, that, that to be fairly quick. And, you know, it's it's a, it's a fairly stock experience. You know, the OnePlus 5 is quite close to stock experience and so is the Moto. The HTC U11 isn't. This, you know, as I said, the Moto is more close to a stock experience rather than, you know, there's not many apps in here that are not part of um, Google's operating system. The only one here is obviously this Moto. It just takes you through gestures and gives you tips, etc. That's the only thing that's really there. I had the Moto G, uh, the first one. They didn't call it G1. It's just called the Moto G. And they were always really good with updates, security updates, all that kind of thing. You were getting it before Samsung HTC phones. So... You know, it's changed hands. The company's changed hands. It's now owned by Lenovo, but it seems to be that they're still, you know, they're still on top of it. And it's still part of the, the Moto ethos that they update on a regular basis to keep the skin light. So this is actually dual SIM. And what I should have shown, in fact, I'll show you just now. This is dual SIM. And shutting down. You can actually open it up because this doesn't have an internal battery. Ed, an internal battery. Doesn't have a a battery that that is built into the casing. You can take it off. That's the silliest way of ever explaining that, isn't it? These ones have their batteries built into it and you can't take them out. You know, if when the battery dies, the phone's effectively dead because of the cost of replacing it. When you buy this, as you saw in my unboxing the other day, you'll get the, your battery in a little uh, bag and you need to insert it yourself. You've got two SIM slots here. There are some versions that only have one SIM slot. This one can take uh, two SIMs and a micro SD. So I think that's good because, you know, in a year and a half, I saw my Google Nexus going from having great battery life and at the end, it would get to 20% and die. Now, if I could have just went out and bought another battery, I probably would still be using my Google Nexus, if I'm honest, because it would still do everything that I needed to do. Unfortunately, at the top end, there, this isn't a feature anymore. But that is something that it would be amazing if we saw a flagship phone adding, because I think it's I think that's good. You know, not only can you buy a spare battery and take it with you, you know, to quickly put on, a, give your phone full power, rather than using a, a power bank, when the battery degrades over time, like say in a year's time, you can just buy another battery for like, you know, six or seven pounds or whatever it is, ten dollars. Overall, I think it's a decent package. But, there's always a but, isn't there? It does have some limitations. And you probably saw one of the main limitations when I was showing you the performance of the camera. Now, this has a 13 megapixel sensor in the back and a 5 megapixel sensor on the front. Obviously, megapixels don't tell you the full uh, the full story. They just tell you how much uh, a picture can be blown up to. And in the daytime, I think both of these cameras are actually quite good. If you've got a lot of light, you're outside, you're going to get decent photos with the selfie camera and better photos at the back. I didn't have any problems with them. I don't actually have any... I took some photos and then I deleted them all at the time. Um, but at night time, this is when this camera, uh, the cameras on this phone will struggle. 
I was quite disappointed with the performance when I was recording the videos for um, the camera. And night time, it isn't the best. So if you are at a bar, a nightclub, a restaurant, and, and there isn't much light, then you're probably going to be disappointed with what comes out. Um, you know, there is a flash, so you can use that, but you're not going to get the same kind of quality you get from an iPhone 7, Google Pixel, Samsung S8, OnePlus 5, HTC U11, that type of thing. At the end of the day, this is a quarter of the cost of this phone. It's about a third of the cost of this one. There's always sacrifices when you save money, and the camera is one area where they have cut corners. Obviously, they have to, you know. But uh, the other areas, the microphones, not for call quality. When I'm talking about microphones, I'm talking about video recording. Video recording, the microphones aren't very good. In fact, I go as far as saying that they're very disappointing. Is perhaps to be expected for, you know, sensors, five megapixel sensor, etc. And uh, when I tested another budget phone that had some like a 30 megapixel and five megapixel sensor on it, the mic quality was very bad in that as well. So I assume they're using similar microphones in these budget to mid-range phones. And the it was just kind of echoey and it was picking up a lot of kind of hissing and noise. It, it just isn't good. But for a lot of people, they won't be recording videos for this, so it's not going to be a big problem. And inside, it's, you know, the audio is a little bit better. It's pretty calm, there's not much wind, so hopefully you don't hear anything like that messing about with the microphones. Um, raining a little bit, some birds. The Moto G is different. I found the microphones to be really kind of echoey, kind of wishy-washy, you know, there's a lot of echoes and it's kind of like the mics are inside a washing machine or, a washing machine or something. It's a little bit bizarre the way that it sounds. It's really, really not good. Overall though, I think this is a decent phone. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people will be happy with. At the end of the day, this is a very cheap phone to buy. Overall, I think this is a very good phone. As I said, I haven't been using this every single day, but I've been playing around with it enough to know what it can do and what it can't do. Who is this phone for? If you just want a good day-to-day -day phone, Twitter, Facebook, text messages, WhatsApp, you just want a, a phone to do you know, communication, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is a fantastic option. It's a quarter of the price of my HTC U11, and that alone indicates how ludicrous some of the prices are for brand new phones in the smartphone market at the top end. If you want the latest and greatest camera on a phone, the latest and greatest video recording, then obviously this isn't the phone for you. That is one of the areas where this phone falls behind, without a doubt. And it's just one of those things. Phone companies need to distinguish their phones. Um, they can't give too much in their cheaper phones or no one would buy the more expensive phones. So there is a reason why they cut corners in certain specs and certain features. But overall, this is a very good phone. If you're a gamer, I don't think you'd be hugely disappointed by this either. As I've shown, you know, as I've shown you there, apps are going to be a little bit slower to load. But when, when you're actually in an app, it's going to perform pretty much the same way as a flagship phone, give or take. Um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Comes in 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes, but you can also put in a micro SD card up to 256 gigabytes. Um, it would have been good to have Type C you know, for power at the bottom, but it's not a deal breaker. They have thrown in a fingerprint reader, so that's pretty cool. It's no waterproofing, but, you know, that's not a big thing for most people anyway. Um, overall, though, I think it's a very good package. Now, if you're looking at the G5 Plus, it really comes down to whether you need those extra features. The G5 Plus has a lot of features that perhaps would be more associated with a flagship phone. For for example, the 4K recording, the 4 gigabytes of RAM, etc. But this isn't sluggish. It's a, it's a good phone. It's kind of like a plastic build, but I mean, I, I, I talked about this the other day in my OnePlus 5 video. The OnePlus 5 that's sitting over there has a kind of plastic build as well. So 
it's not like it feels too cheap. Overall, I think this is a good phone. If you're looking for a budget phone, I would look at this, but I would also look at the G5 Plus. It really comes down to what you need and what is important. Some people don't even use their, their camera on their phone. They just use it for text messages and calls and things like that. Some people will be looking to buy this as a backup or perhaps like a holiday phone. So it really depends what you need. For the price, I think that this is a fairly decent phone. Um, I owned the Moto G in the past myself and I was always happy with the fact that it was always updated. There isn't bloatware. It's cheap to buy as well. So if you're in the habit of losing your phone a lot, perhaps you're out drinking with your friends, perhaps you're in a job where you break your, you drop your phone a lot, then you don't want to be spending a lot of money on phones anyway. So this is where, you know, you turn to phones like this. There are a lot of alternatives to this in the Chinese market, not so much in the domestic market. So there's maybe a few options, but in the Chinese market, there's a lot of options. You can maybe get slightly more for your money, but then you're not going to get a local guarantee if you need to send it back. You know, there's things, there's, there's issues like that that come up. So I'd like to delve into Chinese phones and, and things like that in the future. But for now, for a UK phone, an American phone, a European phone, wherever you are in the world, if you want a phone that's made by a major uh, phone company and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I would highly recommend looking at the Moto G5. If you've got any questions about this, please let me know. If I've not covered anything in this video, I do apologize, but I have felt a little bit rushed because I'm giving this back to my friend tomorrow and saying thank you for it. But please do ask and I'll do my best to answer you. And until next time, thanks for watching.